Yeah. Welcome back to the Two Percent Podcast. I'm Keanu Fentress here with Harrison Ray, Ro Coleman. Another one, another good episode for you guys coming up. We got special guest Vanderbilt um, athlete, baseball player, first round pick in a 2021 draft, mm-hmm. 25th pick, I believe, in the first round. Um, yeah, right. 2022 yeah. draft. 22, 22, 22, 22. Yeah, 22 Excuse me. <laughs> we got uh, Spencer Jones. Welcome, brother. Welcome. Yes, sir. How you doing? Doing well. Good, Thanks for good. having me. Of course, man. So the two percent basically is high school athletes and their journey to Division One baseball, Division One sports in general, and looking through the research, only you know through all sports, male, female, no matter what it is, only two percent make it. You know, so that's what we call the two percent. So give us like a little background on your journey to you know Vanderbilt and the kind of work that you put in and. California all the way to Nashville. So just talk about that and let us know how that happened. So yeah, I mean, my journey started in Southern California. I'm the youngest of four boys. Um, oh, I you, got- You get your ass whooped. Yeah, <laughs> when I was younger, I definitely did. And then I popped up and started growing and mm. eventually got taller than all of them, but yeah. you know, they still oh, yeah. like to talk their shit. Of course, but of course. They're all um, artists and musicians, funny enough. And I'm the only one that happened to play a sport. Mm. Um, That's dope. But. Yeah, I grew up in San Diego. Um, I was lucky enough to where my older brothers played baseball growing up, and mm. I fell in love with it right away. And all my buddies growing up played baseball, this, that, and whatever. But by the time we got to high school, all my friends had stopped playing, but I would realized I'd gotten pretty good at it. So I kept doing it, kept doing it. I got recruited to Vanderbilt before I played an inning of high school baseball <laughs> when I was 14 years old. Talk about that real quick. Please elaborate, because that's, that's not normal. Yeah, so I, so I'd like finished up Little League in like seventh or eighth grade, and I joined this travel team. And my dad was super pumped about it. He's like, "Oh, you're gonna go see all these colleges. You're gonna go play in all these tournaments. Like, this is gonna be great." And I'll never forget my my travel ball coach came up to me and said, "I think you could be a really good baseball player someday. We could see you at like a mid major, low low level D one. You know, you could play there. You could pitch. You could play outfield. Like, that would be perfect for you." And so in my head, I'm like, yeah, low level D1. Like, that'd be mm. sweet, right? I wanna go yeah. and play every day. Um, and then I think I did like one tournament in Georgia. I hit like 600. <laughs> we went championship, we won, Jeez, or got yeah, second coach. place. And then like, I remember I was sitting in like cooking class and my, um, my coach from that team was like, hey, you know, University of Arizona wants to talk to you today. Can you give him a call? like all these different Pac-12 schools, all these different local schools, and then SEC schools started reaching out shortly thereafter. And like, I was like 14, I hadn't even, you know, finished a semester of high school yet. I was just chilling in cooking class. Yeah, and so I, I had no idea how to handle that stuff. And so me and my dad did a bunch of those, you know, a bunch of those visits um, together um, those first couple of years. But it was like, they said they would only pay for one out of state visit, and I knew mm-hmm. I I got to go see Vanderbilt because mm-hmm. they had just yeah. been in the College World Series, and you know I knew that you know it was a special team, special coach, all that stuff. So, parents paid for me to get that flight out to Nashville, and it's like it was funny. It's in my head, it was the only visit I went on that I didn't yawn once the whole mm-hmm. time, like for like the eight hours that I was at the field, I didn't That's yawn dope. once, right? But I mean, I loved it, and. Um, it was just kind of in that moment I knew like this is going to be the place for me, mm-hmm. and yeah, literally, I think it was like February of my freshman year I committed to go to Vanderbilt. Just crazy to think about. Um, so about that, um, for you though, like growing up as like a younger kid in like amateur sports, were you like say the top end when you were playing little league and like travel ball? Were you like the the guy everybody's like, oh yeah, yeah, he? Or were you kind of like? Hadn't really blossomed yet, but like you saw potential. What were you, what was your, give pe- paint pe- people a picture of like the amateur Spencer Jones. Right. Um, when I was younger, I was always the bigger kid. Gotcha. Like I was like that 12 year old that was 6'3", throwing the ball 80 miles an hour. Right? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, so yeah, you were. Chico. I was, yep, I was <laughs> that kid on the Little League team that you'd see, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, like once that was over, when you started moving to the bigger fields, and for me it was like, I knew I was good, but I always just felt like there was so much more for me to grow into with my body because I'd always been so tall and so thin mm-hmm. that um, you know I didn't really have much strength behind what I was doing, and that took me a really long time to develop. But at the same time, like I had to put on this face like I was a really good, strong baseball player, right? <laughs> yeah. That was committed to Vanderbilt at you know 15, mm-hmm. and so my first year of high school, I probably got like 10 at bats. 
So I didn't even play, even though I was committed to go. Um, funny enough, our uh, center fielder was Mickey Moniak, who got mm. drafted first overall in 2016. So I learned a lot from him, being around him and seeing the way he carried himself through all the whole mm -hmm. process and all that, um, which helped me out a lot. But, you know, as an amateur, it was like, like I, I knew I had this you know, thing to back up. Like I was committed to go play, you know, at Vanderbilt, which was highly respected, obviously in baseball. And in California, it's like kind of unheard of some guy jumping ship from where we're at instead yeah. of going to UCLA or USC or wherever else, jumping ship and going straight into the SEC was, you know, it was different. It was weird. And so, you know, I used to get chirped a lot for that growing up, okay, whatever, sure. this, that. But, I mean, it took me a while to, like, really, like, I don't know, really grow into um, my body and understand, like, what kind of player I was. And a lot of that didn't come until I went to Vanderbilt and was really challenged for the first time where I had to learn more about myself as, you know, a human being more than just an athlete. Because when you're younger, it's like you play your sport, you know, you do it every day, you're good at it, and it's like, you know, kind of who you are and what you do at the time. But it's not until you're, like, really challenged that you have to, like, see that, you know, there's more going on, right? And when I was younger, that was harder. But once I started to figure that out, it made things a lot easier for myself and simplified it, so. No, that's dope, man. You talk about pitching. A lot of people know you as... Six seven Spencer Jones to hit the ball hundred ten plus miles per hour every every time. But you came to Vandy as a two way guy. Kind of talk to us about that process a little bit. Yeah, so I was a pitcher. Um, yeah, I wasn't really a fan of pitching. I uh, I pitched a little bit in high school, so I threw probably like five innings my junior year of high school, and then I went and did like that you know summer showcase stuff yeah. where you're playing in the PG All American Under Armour and stuff and. I had never thrown a pitch above 90 in my life. And I go to one of the showcases and I'm sitting like 93, 94 <laughs> out of nowhere with a curveball. And like in my head, I was like, I had no idea what happened. Like it was just randomly, I grabbed the ball, I started throwing it, threw it way harder. Had no idea where it was going, but I was like throwing the ball like, you know, like crazy. So yeah. I got all these invites to all these showcases and all these games and stuff. And everyone saw me as a pitcher. But in my mind, I'd always been a hitter because mm -hmm. that's just, you know, what I like to do. I like being out on the field every day. And so that kind of made me uncomfortable. It was like people were saying like, oh, this kid's a pitcher. He's a pitcher. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. And for me, it was like I knew I wasn't as good of a pitcher as I was a hitter. But I had never really shown that I was a good hitter up to that point yet. Mm -hmm. So they'd always seen the pitching and been like, oh, this is what he's got. Right. Um, my senior year. When I was throwing one of my starts, I think it was my third or fourth start, I fractured my olecranon, which is like the tip of your elbow, right where the tricep meets. And so I fractured that, and then I had to get surgery. They put two pins in my arm and um, started that rehabbing process. So I sat out my whole senior year because of that. And I got to Vanderbilt. This is funny. I was talking to uh, Brownie about this about a week ago. He, uh, he hit me up when I, as soon as I got to camp. He said, hey, Spence, like, I want to come see you play catch. Like, I haven't seen you throw the ball since, you know, however long ago. I said, yeah, of course, for sure. Um, there was a miscommunication in my throwing program. I didn't have one when I was rehabbing my elbow from yeah. senior year. So I, like, didn't throw a baseball since I literally broke my arm. So I showed up on mm. campus not having thrown a baseball in, like, six months, right? And so I get there and like, I'm like chicken, chicken wing and shit mm -hmm. over to whoever I'm playing catch with. Yeah. I think Brownie cut me off after five minutes. He said, all right, we're good. Let's just go back inside. I was like, Dang. He, didn't, he was just like, all right, let's go. Yeah. And I was talking to him about it. I said, like, what'd you think? Like that first time you saw me throw and he's like, oh, I thought your career was over. Like, I thought you were never going to be able to play baseball again because how bad it was. Damn shit. Um, but yeah, so that happened and then that was the COVID year. And yeah, yeah. so, um, they had me playing like first base and I couldn't even, you can ask Harry, I couldn't even throw the ball to second base. <laughs> Dude, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I can't. We'd be taking square drill, right? And Spence would be at first and there'd be moments Corbs would just be like, what the hell are you doing? Like, I'm talking about the, he couldn't make the throw at all, but Corbs would keep putting him over there. I'm like, Corbs, what are, like, what are we doing? Can't throw. <laughs> just kept putting him over yeah. there. But he could hit. A man could mm -hmm. swing it. Yeah. But, yeah. So while we on your, your first year there, man, talk about uh, what was that like that welcome to you know college moment for you? You know, 
Miles fall ball, you know, just watching guys just hit the ball at the park on command, you know, the last round of BP, that was like my, God, like I'm really here at Vanderbilt, you know? So either in fall, winter, or during the season, like what was like your welcome to the SEC type thing? Hmm. Um, it had to be, you know, like a fall training or like one of those first few weeks that we had gotten in to like the locker room. Cause at Vanderbilt, it's like you have, you know, you get there and you don't have the locker room, you don't have anything, you go and sit in the, um, you know, it was the visiting football locker room. I remember mm -hmm. that. And um, I think it was like the day after media day, like we all got like pullover shirts that had like a little star on it, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember I was like walking into the facility one day and I think it was like three or four older guys on the team started pressing me about wearing a star because I hadn't even earned it yet. I was like, I didn't really understand. Like, yeah, I haven't earned it yet. Take right? that shit like, off. And so like, yeah, three or four guys came up to me and said, no, like that's not how we do it around here. Like you got to earn that on your chest. Like you're not there yet and you, won't, you probably won't be there. And like they kept <laughs> being in my ear, like you got to get there or whatever else. But I think that was a good welcome to Vanderbilt moment when I realized like, oh, this is, you know, this is for real. Yeah, it's so, different. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 100%. Man, you and Harry played in that 2020 season, um, that COVID year that got shut down. Uh, just talk to us about that experience. I remember, where did y'all play at the beginning of the year? Y'all in Texas? Arizona? Yeah, yeah, we were roommates. Roommates okay. in Arizona. Mm -hmm. How's Harry as a roommate, first of all? It was good. He would get his little Chipotle bowl and face on his girlfriend. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh I forgot about that. <laughs> and I just feel like sitting in the bed, just like caking all night. Yeah. yeah. No, nah, I wasn't all night. I tried to. Only with Ro. When I room with Ro, we'd be up all night. That man would never go to sleep. But I, I had some respect. I had a little more respect for Spence. Mm. <laughs> yeah, talk to us about just about that, um, that opening weekend, man. Just uh, no, I mean, you had first base uh, opening weekend. You know, just just that whole experience playing for the first time that weekend. Um, mm. I, I'll be honest, like it was really cool. You know, mm -hmm. I started the first college game my freshman year, but. I think I made like four errors that weekend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to forget that weekend. <laughs> oh, oh God. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah. Damn. No, that was, uh, that was one of those weekends that was like, I think that was probably my oh shit, welcome to uh, college baseball moment was that first weekend. I think I went, I think I got like one hit and then made probably four errors at first base. Oh, yeah. That's a hell of a weekend right there, yeah, brother. That was, yeah. it was, that was my introduction. To, we opened up with Michigan. Played no. UConn. Yeah, we did. did. We okay. opened up with Michigan. Lost, like, the last inning. UConn, we beat them. Then we played Cal Poly. No, lost to Cal Poly. Lost to Cal Poly. On, yeah, that was... Funny weird. enough, that starter for Cal Poly got drafted in the second round by the Yankees this year. Really? So I know him really well. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, that was a... And we had a lot of freshmen. Like, you started. Carter started. CJ started. Um... Am I forgetting somebody? But yeah, all you guys, that was your first action. It was all three of those games were high intense games. And I was like, Phew. yeah, good, good luck to you guys. <laughs> yeah. I hope y'all are ready. Yeah, that was that was very stressful. Cause I'd never yeah. played in a game like that. I was like in California public school before that. And like the most competitive game I'd ever played was like our rival high school, like the last game of the year. And there was probably 150 people yeah. there. Right. Yeah. So I'd never played in front of that many people at any point in the game. And yeah. I was like. Arizona. I'll give to your credit. I'll give you the one thing that I always noticed from you, like rooming with you and just being around you. You always had like a calm demeanor to yourself. Like you never seemed like you got phased by anything. Like Corbs might say, like Corbs. I remember Corbs used to wear you out at first, and you just shrug it off and just keep going. And I was like, damn, this kid. There's nothing getting to this kid right now. I was like, you can something. There's something about him, and so I was just that always caught my attention. Out of all those guys, I was like, okay, yeah, he's gonna be. What, what, he what, might have that in him. What, was that real? You know, in terms of a uh, like, course has gotten on everybody. You know, more times than we can count. You know, and like that first time can be like, like damn. You know, but you know, as the time you kind of get used to it. But do you do you have a moment? You know, a chorus moment where he's like, he tried to tell you to go home or. <laughs> He yeah, here you got thirty. Like we all got we thirty. We all got thirty to go team. home. I think everybody has. If you if you gone through Vanderbilt at least one time, till yeah. you go home. This is this is a good one. So we were playing the SEC tournament my sophomore year, okay. and I don't remember who it was, but we had lost the game, and our you know tournament was over. Yeah, and we're all pissed off. I think I made like a base running mistake at one point in the game, or like I was a late pinch hit sub, and I struck out right, and like I felt like shit. 
everyone felt like shit and I'm cleaning up my stuff and I'm walking out. And as I'm walking out, Corp's like, hey, Spence, I should have never recruited you. <laughs> <laughs> he, said, he said, you're just a waste of time and energy. Like, I don't know what you're God, doing here. Damn. You should probably find another place to go. So, <laughs> Right, right after okay. the game? Right after the game. I'm in <laughs> uniform, like walking out. And I was like, that one hurt, right? <laughs> yeah. That, <laughs> and I actually didn't play for like, I didn't play all of regionals, all of super regionals. And then he gives me like a pinch hit at bat in like the ninth inning against Arizona in the College World Series. And then, Oh, damn. How was that? Like, how was I remember that bad. Not like, like you said, you hadn't played for. I hadn't played in like three two, weeks. Three weeks. How was, what was that like having to go get thrown into that situation? You're at the College World Series. Like, it's crazy. Man. Don't get bigger than that. But like, I'd kind of accepted it. I was like, I'm a team guy for like the time. Being, right? yeah. I'm just going to be a good teammate, goof around, have fun or whatever. And I was still getting all my stuff done pregame, obviously. Right. Mm -hmm. And get my work in. And I remember just getting tapped on the shoulder. Like, hey, Spence, like, you know, grab a bat. Let's go. And like, I don't think I even took a warm up swing because there was just so much adrenaline. Just like looking around, it's like, mm -hmm. that's what you play baseball for, yeah, right? Fair, like yeah. for moments like this to play, you know, on this stage. And like at that moment, like the game kind of felt small for me in a mm -hmm. sense, because it was mm -hmm. like, I felt like I'd been there, but I hadn't been there. You know what I mean? And yeah. it was like, I don't know, it was crazy. I remember, so I had my first at bat against Arizona and I rolled over, got out, could have won mm -hmm. the game. Oh, well. And like in my head, I was like, all right, whatever. We're going to win this baseball game anyways. We do find a way to win it. And then, um, yeah. And then we played that Stanford game later. And that was the one I played in. That was that was good. That was another like late game pinch hit at bat. But it was like no stress. Like it was just like we're mm -hmm. out there having fun. Yeah. yeah. And gosh, it was crazy. That's not normal, though. Like the way you, you talking about how it was low stress, the game felt small. Is that because of how Vanderbilt trains and like the training environment that you, know, you guys cultivate throughout the season, you know, that, or just playing in the SEC when you get to those moments like that, the stadium, you got 26, 27,000 people in the stands, tight ball game too, you know, mm -hmm. it's on the line, but to you, it felt a normal day at the plate, you know, so. Well, in a sense, it was like, I love I love this analogy that Corbs make. It would be us against everyone every time that we were on a road trip, Facts. right? Mm -hmm. So it was like, we had heard, you know, a lot of us had been hearing for years, you know, a lot of the same messaging, a lot of the same stuff. But like in these moments, that stuff like really, really applies. And it's like you see everyone around you on your team that like, yes, like this is how we operate. This is what we do. And and it's like comforting to know that you have, you know, your guys on your side. And like, I don't know, it was like I was with my brothers. Right? Yeah. And there was nothing, nothing for me to worry about because I knew they had my back. And so in that moment, I could just relax and be myself and not have to worry about a result just go out there and compete speak more on that the college world series from getting ready to get on a plane picking your suit out going to the stadium for the first time like talk to us about how that felt because we all had the chance to do it but especially then you went but it was kind of like post covid as well so talk a little bit more on that as well yeah it was cool i mean I, I'll be honest, I'd never really watched the College World Series or anything growing up. Um, so it's like I had no idea what it was about. I didn't even know it was in Omaha until like I came to That's college crazy. and they said like, oh, we want to go to Omaha. So yeah. what the hell's <laughs> right? um, But I mean, it was cool. It's like we're playing, you know, in front of, you know, all these fans. I remember it was like, it felt like it was the biggest stadium I've ever been in my life when I walked out into TD Ameritrade. Um, like it was... It was cool, but like, I don't want to take anything away from that. Like me in my own head, I felt like it wasn't mine because mm -hmm. I wasn't a contributor on the team because I was like a bench player. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I was like, I saw it and I was like, this is really cool, but I would, like I imagine it feel a lot more gratifying if I had a role on this team, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, that was a motivator in the future for sure, right? Because I yeah. saw that it was like, well, I want to do this with my own group, or not my own group, but something that I feel more, yeah. you know, you were more in charge of. You had a bigger role in it. Yeah. So I guess even elaborate on that now, because we had, had, I don't know, you can't even call it half a year, quarter of a year together, and I saw you coming in, you could swing it. It was it was just, for how big you were, it was, it was crazy how well you could get the barrel to the ball all the time. And you might not have, you didn't have the pop that you grew into, and I was that was always I was like, dang, he 
he just slaps it everywhere. I was like, he literally just slaps it everywhere. I'm like, this is, it's, it's impressive. What was it like from going from that, then that next year, you didn't really play a lot, but you still kind of found it. But then your junior year, it was just a different animal. Like, what, what was that process like? Just paint a picture for people to just, how it didn't really start off the way, maybe the way you thought it would start off, but then you turned into something crazy. Yeah, I mean, I had a, so after the COVID season, like that summer, I got in Tommy John surgery. That's true, yeah. And so that stopped that, yeah. my pitching, like, all together. I was like a clear sign, like, hey, I'm done pitching, right? Yeah. And so that whole sophomore year, it was always like, I'd always felt like damaged goods because I was like hurt on the field, couldn't really do much. Like I could only swing the bat, but I hadn't gotten many at bats. So like, it was hard to trust me in those situations. And then what changed everything for me was going to the Cape Cod League and playing out there. Um, my grandparents lived out there for the last 40, 50 years. And so I was able to stay with them and like rediscover my roots in a sense. Cause like coming from California to Nashville, I had no family, yeah. no nothing. I was just kind of playing baseball, how I knew how to play baseball, right? And I wasn't really playing for anyone or doing anything. I was just kind of doing it for myself. And then once I got to the Cape and you know, I started to see my family and like see how proud they were, all these different things It really motivated me to like you know, take more ownership of it and be like, all right, like this is what I want to do. And like, this is how it's supposed to feel, you know? And I mean, I got to the Cape, started getting consistent at bats. I was actually playing in the field. So my whole sophomore year, I didn't have an inning in de like defensively because I couldn't throw still. And yeah. so once I got to the Cape, they put me in center field, they hit me lead off. So I was getting a bunch of at bats, a bunch of defensive opportunities, played well in the Cape. And then the second I got back to Vanderbilt, my goal was just to put on as much weight as possible, build up as much strength as I could. And, you know, they did a great job of that. I literally went from, uh, I went from 209 to 235 <laughs> by the end of the fall. Shut Ooh. down. And that was just literally like, all I was doing was, you know, eating as much as possible, lifting as much as possible, resting, recovering, all that stuff. Just because I knew I needed to build up my motor if yeah. I wanted to be where I wanted to go. And then, yeah. And like, you know, a lot of stuff in my head changed too. Cause like, I realized like I'd gone through injuries. Like I'd been, you know, people thought I was going to be this like, you know, really good player when I first came in and I had felt like I had disappointed. And like I had dealt with, you know, hearing a lot of things that I, you know, probably wish I never heard. But I mean, I just kind of realized like the shit that I went through, like not a lot of people have gone through it. I know it's been, you know, thicker than a lot of others. So it's like, the confidence from that, it's like, mm -hmm. like I've gone through some shit that you yeah. haven't gone through, yeah. know, right? And so I have this confidence that you probably do not have because I know that I've made it through it and I'm here now, mm. right? That's so. a bar. Now, talk about, uh, that, that's huge. I don't wanna just glaze over that in terms of diversity aspect, you know, going through that, those two years where these expectations, the injuries, not playing for a span of two months, then getting to play a little bit, and then like that's a lot to deal with. Number one, as a, a young 20, 21 year old kid, and then being at Vandy, and then so talk to us just coming out on the other side. But what about like that process of being smack dab in the middle of all that adversity and the mental junk that you got going on through your head and how you were able to flip it, you know, and use it as fuel, you know? Right, and that was the thing was like, I had, I felt like those are all reasons for me to feel sorry for myself instead of reasons mm -hmm. to motivate myself, right? Mm -hmm. And like, I didn't really see the other side of the motivation. It was kind of like, I felt like I was just getting by to get by because I felt like at some point there was gonna be a light at the end of the tunnel. And then once I realized what I was doing wasn't making me happy or I wasn't feeling like, you know, any kind of gratification towards me going to the field or doing any of that, it's like, all right, something's got to change, right? And mm -hmm. so, um, like, I just needed, like, a change of scenery. I just needed to be around, you know, my family, some different people, and the Cape provided me that opportunity. And it was, like, once I realized, like, like, the worst part is over. Like, I had, you know, I'd gone through the embarrassment of not being able to throw my first year and then, you know, gotten past Tommy John surgery, you know, I'd gotten past two years of Vanderbilt, which is hard as it is, right? Yeah. And it was like, all right, I know I can do this even when I'm not at 100%. Like, let's just try and simplify our life and then just move forward from there. 
And so that's what it was, was just simplifying things. And then once I was able to simplify it and I could focus on what mattered, like, you know, competing and being a teammate, that's when I feel like everything really took off for me at that point. No, that's good stuff, man. I want you to, you know, compare, well, say what you can in terms of your locker room 2021, locker room 2022, you know, obviously different, different squads, different group of people, you know, um, kind of talk to us about that, I guess the different feeling, you know, in that locker room and the people and everything. Yeah. I mean, like senior leadership and, you know, older guys have so much to do with a lot of that stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, the majority of the older guys that were in there in 2022 didn't have, you know, all the experience that guys had had in the past. If we had had a season in 2020 that carried all the way through yeah. and we got to know, you know, all those older guys who had been there and like lived through it, you know, in the past, um, like we could have learned so much from them about being a leader, being a teammate and understanding the culture a lot more. Cause after my freshman year, after we left, it was like, I got a taste of it, but you know, it's like you, you know, or you learn so much more during the season than you do Class. outside of the season. Yeah. Right. And to compare it, I mean, we had, you know, obviously very talented teams on 2021 and 2022. We just didn't take that step in 22 because we just didn't have the edge that we had in 21. Mm. Simple as that. So. No, for sure. Going off that, playing in the SEC is just crazy. I mean, the environments you play in, like, what are some of your favorite places to go to? Oh, I, I loved Arkansas. I love that place. Exactly what I said. That's, that's got to be a, I love that. What about Consensus Arkansas? One. Um, it was funny. I actually went 0 for 13 that weekend. That, Made three shit. errors. In right field. <laughs> hey, bro. You I don't have one. It happens, them. bro. I turned 21 on that Saturday. Damn. And I was, like, laughing my ass off the whole weekend. Because I'm like, I couldn't if I could hit the ball. But we yeah. were winning games, mm -hmm. right? And I, they were cheering for me when I came up to the plate by Sunday, right? I was yeah. loving it. They, um, trying to, they wanted to hit. I know. Well, they were, they were cheering because I was going to get out. No. <laughs> I thought they were trying to fuck you up. <laughs> they said, damn. Oh, man, I loved it there. Um, I really liked Ole Miss, too. I thought there was something cool about that place. I don't know why, but Did they I hit a homer off you guys? Yeah. Did you? So you saw the beer shower? I saw the beer shower, yeah. Oh, yeah you, you right in right you field. Right there. So you so might you know, feel it a little bit. Oh, no. Section. No, I, I didn't play right field my sophomore year. So oh, we went oh, there my okay. sophomore year. Gotcha. And I got to see the beer shower from the dugout. I was like, damn, that's that, sweet. Like, yeah. Paint a picture for that because I don't think people realize like that, like that's probably one of the craziest college moments that there is in college baseball. Like when you see, you yeah. see the home run and I think everybody for the first time just turns their head and looks to right field just to see it because it's unreal. Yeah, it's rowdy, right? I mean, because you have, I don't know how many people they fit in there, probably like 10,000 people, right? Yeah. And then they got a quarter of that out in right field out in this like pavilion steps thing and it's all college kids and every time that there's a home run hit everyone with their solo cups as soon as the ball lands they'll all throw their beer up in the air and it's this huge you know you know shower of it's beer ridiculous. right so yeah it is it is pretty ridiculous i remember seeing that i was like oh Hope I never see that again. Sure enough, <laughs> there were more throughout the weekend, but I kept looking every time. Oh, you have to. What uh, what uh, what team talks the most shit? Team wise or just uh, atmosphere wise? Like um, for us, I I enjoyed going to Clemson and on the regionals. That was a uh, because the dugout, and the bullpen is connected, and the, the fans are right on top of you, and the pitchers are warming up, and they just talk the most trash the whole time and it's enjoyable i think it's hilarious you yeah, know Clemson, to me was... i think it's it's boring if, you, if they aren't talking so so like what about you who, who talked the most trash um well obviously the orange school talked a lot of trash <laughs> what's imagine. that what's that orange school what's I, that? I can't even in, say somewhere it. in knoxville i think i don't know <laughs> Sean, yeah, big Sean. <laughs> UTK, UTK, yeah, man. Yeah. So y'all got to experience that, man, like the crazies, because UT wasn't always that. They, they've been buns. There was you know, no crazies when we played them. So, oh, really? There were yeah. no crazies. Yeah. It was crazy like how that. it goes like that, right? Right. Now the they good. The they're good. It's, yeah. And the crazies yeah. are out. Everybody out there. Yeah. You know? I, think, I think the worst chirps I got were at Auburn. Because mm. okay. I was, Auburn? yeah, Dang. yeah. I've heard I was that. in, I was in right field, and they have like a grass patch, like right next to the bullpen, you know, chain link fence area, oh, and okay. they had, you know, they're grilling out, and it was a bunch of frat kids, 
and you know they they find your social media and they dig through and they find your mom's mm -hmm. facebook they find your brother <laughs> you know they start asking questions about oh who's this who's that don't have a girlfriend they're gonna find her too yeah exactly so it was literally after that weekend i i removed every photo that i you know. <laughs> <laughs> say, this is not gonna happen again with y'all not gonna, never do gonna talk happen about again, my family right? but i think i remember auburn pissed me off the most i think what they say uh, yeah, is there one one comment that you remember like to this day that somebody said to you? Uh, they just were they were saying really bad things about my mom mm, and about my shit, brothers, yes. right? And yeah, it's just like it. I'm very like during the game, it's like I think that shit's like hilarious, yes. but the second it turns personal towards my family, like yeah. Yeah. that's a quick way for me to get really pissed off. What about uh, Oregon State? Because I remember I played. We were up there with my freshman year, yeah. and they had that big. It was super regional. They had a big section out there, and I played right field. I came in for JJ for one of them, mm -hmm. and like I remember it vividly. It was like you divide the stands in half. One half was like cheering me on, and they were all Oregon State people cheering me on, mm -hmm. like talking to me. Then the other side was like they're sitting there talking shit to me, and I'm like looking back, and I'm like, wait, I'm trying to figure out who said what. I'm like, what is going on? So it was Oregon State. Were they crazy for you too? They loved me. It was hilarious. Damn, they wasn't fucking with me sometimes. Um, I remember it was like winning, like there was like a pitching change or something, yeah. and like they were you know yelling at me. So I turn around and start talking to them. Kid throws me a piece of gum. I catch it. I put it in. <laughs> Next at bat, I hit a homer right over them, and then I go back to the outfield, and they're all like going like this to me <laughs> as I'm coming out. I thought it's hilarious. Yeah. So uh, that place. What uh, did who all did you play out there? You guys played. We played University Oregon. of San Diego, New Mexico State, and then it was Oregon State. Oregon State, okay. Yeah. Got you. Man, so you uh, you get to hear your name called, you know, June, July, whenever the draft is, uh, by the Yankees, you know, in the first round. Talk to us, you know, about that experience and kind of like leading up to it as well. Did you expect that, you know? Obviously, you, you hear the talks in the media, you know, the possibilities, you got your agent and whatnot, or advisor at the time. And so, like, talk to us about just that whole process of expecting it and then actually getting your name called. Right. It was crazy. I mean, I, like, so once the season ended, I had, like, a really good regional, right? I ended it, had probably the best weekend I had all year it was in Corvallis. And once the season was over, I packed up my stuff and went back to California and, like, it felt like the first time I could actually breathe, right? Mm. Cause like the whole year I wasn't, I wasn't concerned about the draft. Like it's, it's, it's easy for me to say like, oh, I wasn't concerned about the draft, but like actually like I was not concerned about it at all. Cause I saw, you know, I saw like Kamar and Leiter, and Amar and all those guys playing. I never heard them say the word draft once in the locker room. So I was like, why should I worry about right. something I can't control? Because it's like the draft is literally just the opinions of other people, right? right. And so it's mm -hmm. like they pick you based on what they see. It's like you're not picking them, right? So it's like mm -hmm. there's nothing you can do about it. So why waste the mental energy on, you know, thinking about that mm -hmm. stuff? And so. That's a bar. Yeah. I Like I'd finished up my season. I went back to California, started training. Um, it was funny. My agent, my agent actually helped me out a lot. He started doing, um, like he talked to like local reporters and stuff and like they started putting out articles and stuff talking about my background and then um there was there's this company that tries to quantify athleticism right mm -hmm. and so they i did like some of their athletic testing and they did a write-up on me about that yeah about how i was you know so athletic at my size right that's and true whatever else so they tried to build up like a little media hype train building up before the draft which actually worked out pretty well because like I we then I had, after that I went to the combine and people had mentioned the articles and stuff that they had written I was like all right mm -hmm. this is kind of working out perfect and then yeah and then the draft rolled around and I knew I was going to go anywhere from 25 to 40 I just didn't know which team or where or what um, so that day was stressful as you can imagine and we had ho I think we hosted like 200 people at my house. Mm. So we had like the entire city of Encinitas just like sitting in my living <laughs> yeah, room. Yeah, y'all right? lit. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the Red Sox had like the 24th pick. And then I got a text from Oppenheimer, who's like the head of scouting. He said, enjoy this next one, Spence. Can't wait to see you soon. Oof. So, hell yeah. Sheesh. 
So, How was uh, the combine? I know that's something that was yes. new. Talk about yeah. that a little bit. It's only been just around for like two, two years. So that's the second two year, years. I think. Yeah, the combine was cool. I mean, they put us up. Um, it was in downtown San Diego, which was extremely convenient for me, at least. Um, yeah. But, I mean, it's a really, really good idea. And mm -hmm. Because it's like you have all these guys, you know, in the same place, running through the same testing, right? And it was an opportunity for us to meet with teams face to face. When That's in the past true. we had never had that, because um, it was all Zoom calls or whatever else. Or like I'd meet an area scout. Like I never really talked to like you know a team's brass unless yeah. they had come to our house. But we weren't even we weren't doing house meetings. Um, but I'll be honest, I don't think it's the best place for a high school baseball player to go. I think it's it should be better for like those top end guys who are guaranteed to get you know first to second round money out of mm -hmm. high school, or you know college guys that you know have variability throughout the draft. Because like, don't get me wrong, like they sell it really well at the combine because mm -hmm. they put us up in a really nice hotel, a lot of really nice food, gave us a bunch of free gear, a bunch of like photo opportunities. You're hanging out at the field, you're doing all these different events, you're meeting all these big leaguers, and it's like. If I were, you know, 18 years old and I didn't, I didn't know any better, I would think that's how it is like all the time, yeah. right? <laughs> Cat, and so fake picture for <laughs> you. And so it's like they're, they're really doing a good job of selling it to these kids, which I kind of felt bad about because it's mm -hmm. like we, like a bunch of the college guys that were there, yeah. we were you know, sitting there talking. It's like, you know, there's no, there's no way we would be able to be prepared to go into professional baseball unless we went to college and dealt with you know, the things that you have to deal with as a human being mm, in college. Say that right? again for these kids. Say it again. So it's like, mm -hmm. you know, you have to be a human being before you're a baseball player. You learn how to be a human being in college, right? You learn how to manage your time and do all these different things, you know, at a level that you, you know, you just didn't have in high school. And, you know, there's so many experiences and stuff that you miss out on if you just jump straight into it. But how many kids were out there? It's like 300 kids. Like, yeah. It was crazy. Do you think you got spoiled by Vandy and now being in pro ball? Um, I just feel like I, I didn't know what to expect getting into pro ball, but I knew mm -hmm. like Vanderbilt was like the perfect place for me to like, you know, to transition from. I wouldn't say that I'm spoiled, but it's more like I just I'm not as stressed out as I feel like I should be. Mm. That makes sense. I don't okay. Know. So spoiled from a sense of I was talking to Jack and it could work against you being a institution like Vandy where everything is so well ran and it's yeah. like top to bottom, so well oil machine, the people, nutrition that you have, how they feed us, the plane rides, mm -hmm. and now you go from all that, and then you go to Pro Ball and it's not like that. Yeah, you, you get know? none of that. Yeah. But I mean, at the same point, it's like you see how it's run at Vanderbilt, right? Mm -hmm. Like you see, the steps that it takes for you to be able to take care of yourself at that really high level. And then, and now it's just up to you to fill in the blank and do it yourself. Mm. Right. So, I mean, the structure at Vanderbilt is unbeatable, right? right? As far as like day to day, you're always doing something and you know, it's fun, but yeah. And pro ball is obviously different than that. Just need to eat more. To yeah. Be honest. That's the one thing. It, is, it is a lack of food. Yeah. A lot of peanut butter jelly sandwiches. Yeah. yeah. But speak a little bit on, I want you to talk about, if you could like describe, you know, what it's like to be at Vandy, you know, as a student athlete, if that, you know, in a, a few words, I said it's demanding, you know, Corpse knows it. And he tells us that it's demanding and you should you should want it to be the man. You know, that's why you, that's why you came here. Mm -hmm. And if you don't like it, you can just leave, you mm -hmm. know? So, like, how would you describe, the, like, Vanderbilt to, like, the, to the outer world? Hmm. That's a good question. Yeah. Because there's so many, like, there's so many parts to it. Yeah. I'll say it, it's militant at times. You, know, you can think it's militant. And, like, it's very yeah. structured. The you standard know? is through the roof. The standard is, right. and is it up does here. Not move, it does not come down yeah, for man. anybody. Mm -hmm. The training sessions are... It's, it's moving, you know, it's weird if you make an error in the training session, you yeah. know, after a while, it's like, damn, I made an error. Yeah, you know, like, it's it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, but it's like, it's real though, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah. you learn so much about being there that, you know, you wouldn't learn anywhere else. And it's like, that's how highly, you know, successful operational groups and cultures work is like mm. what, you know, Corb's had running at Vanderbilt, 
right? Because he understands the importance of a standard in a culture and like the importance of bringing people together and like, you know, doing these things as a group, right? And like, I just think it's like, I'm trying to find the right word for it. I can't yeah. think of it, but it's like, he understands like what it takes to build a culture and a program that is successful, right? And that's mm -hmm. the reason why we all went there in the first place. It is demanding, you know, it's really hard. It's schools, you know, damn near impossible, right? <laughs> <laughs> but fact. You're not lying. <laughs> Would you major in communication studies? Hey, my man. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. That was that was tough, yeah. No, but it is. Like but it's like at the end of the day, like that's how, you know, the best organizations in the world are run mm -hmm. by, you know, people who hold each other accountable. So I yeah. guess the word I'd use is like accountability more yeah. than anything else. Yeah, he, he definitely sets the tone. He sets the standard. You know, he's very clear in his message to us, the staff, and like everybody's on board and kind of gets to that point where the seniors and juniors are able to relay or better yet reinforce that type of message to the young guys, either by example or vocally, you know, so there's no slippage, you know, there's no room for slippage. And so I think, but it's, at the same time, it, it's fun as well. Yeah. Like, it's, it's a lot, a of, lot fun. of fun. It's a lot of fun. Like it is, it's, it's very structured for sure, but he, he lets us, he's like, hey, when you get out there to that field, like take ownership of the field, you know, talk shit, you know, like have fun, mm -hmm. dive, celebrate it, you know. And so, especially our year, we were yapping back and forth from the outfield to the infield. Like, if he's hitting, I'm talking trash, you know, like, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, yeah. it's a it's a good environment. He tried you to know. hit it by me, it didn't work. <laughs> like, I'll say, I'm, I'm coming your way, you know, I'm coming yeah, your way. Every time you know. I found my glove. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, but, nah, man, what's the, what's the most juiced up, like, you've been for, like, a series, you know, like. The most he, amped I've been? Like, the. The tease, like after that Tuesday, Wednesday, because I know you're not supposed to look past Tuesday, Wednesday, those midweek games, but you get, you got that weekend series coming up, and he's like, I can't Everybody wait to play these. Of them. <laughs> I can't wait to play these dudes. <laughs> you know. Uh, you're probably going to have to cut this out, but literally yeah. the most amped up I'd ever been was for the Tennessee series and the LSU series, and we got swept at home at both of them. I was fucking wired <laughs> for both of those series. Like, I was geared up, and, like, I had a good series in both of them, yeah. but we just fucking got swept, and I just felt demoralized by the end of How was Corbs after that two-week stretch? Oh, my God, dude. He was going to fucking to kill someone. <laughs> yeah, no. like, you genuinely thought he was going to kill someone. That dude. never happened. I don't think you since he's been there, I don't think UT has ever I don't think they came oh, they never swept us. Yeah. Never definitely never swept us. I don't think they beat us at home in the series. I can't I don't know. Was, they might have beat us. They, be, they might have beat us. In I think 19, what, what about when, when former uh no they won that nah. series at home. I remember that, that was a hype series. Yeah. Damn, so y'all got swept. Yeah. So I know that shit hurt. I ain't go to I ain't go around course for about like a month after I might say like when, like, when those moments happen, it's kind of like you trying to like not get close to them, you know, you don't want to look at them, right. you know, mm. damn. So, yeah. so y'all had Tennessee at home last year or this past year, yeah. Yup, yeah. mm -hmm. came to the crib. Mm. Why LSU though? I could understand Tennessee because in state, why LSU? My whole family came to watch me play for the first okay. time. Like I, my grandparents hadn't seen me play since the summer. Um, my uncle, who actually went on my first visit with me to Vanderbilt nice. had never seen me play baseball. No. Right. That's wild. And so I had like all my brothers there, my grandparents, my uncles, Dang, one of my cousins. Had a section. Holy so there was had like a twelve of us. Twelve Joneses sitting there. And like I like I went off. I think I got three hits a game every single game, had two bombs the last game. Oh, and we yeah. still you did go off. Yeah, and we still <laughs> lost. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Say your brothers were, um, are musicians. Do you have any musical talents? No. Hell no musical shit. talent Damn. at all. <laughs> I wish, man. I wish. That was real. Who's a, who's a guy you say was that you love facing in the SEC or you, or you didn't want to face in the SEC? Like pitcher player-wise? Pitcher. Mm -hmm. Somebody on the mound. He can be on your team. Actually, like to do one that's on, on Vandy, your your three years there, and then do mm -hmm. one that you played against. A picture that you look forward to facing, and the one's like, oh, shit, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's cop out to say rock and lighter, so I'm not gonna yeah. say those two. Mm -hmm. um, 
God, like Hugh Fisher. Oh, Ooh, that's not a fun match for you. <laughs> that's not fun because you know there might be one that just yeah he might let that thing go. Yeah, yeah that was that was never a fun one. Um, the most fun at bats I ever had were against Michael Dillon and Sam Laboki because I always just talked you like shit Sam. To yeah, I did not. Sam oh, was not I comfortable right handed, bro. Not comfortable because he, he goes so he moves he works so quick. Yeah, like he he's out of the side step every. It's like every pitch. I'm like, dude, nobody's on base. You could chill out. Right. And he's just breaking off slider, breaking off slider, breaking off. Yeah. Bro. I love facing those guys, though, because I would just routinely just talk shit to them yeah. like all day throughout the week. And I kind of feel bad because Michael's had like three arm surgeries and I'm still talking about the balls that hit off from freshman year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm just saying I'm waiting until you get back on a mound so I can face you again. Right? Yeah. Facts. Hey, you do it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What about from, from other schools? Um, I mean, the best pitchers that we faced this year um, – the Tennessee arms, the uh, yeah starters were really good. Dolander yeah. was a really good pitcher. I got to give it to him. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. guys, guys, real. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what about him though? I saw that game. I saw, I saw all three of them. Honestly. High spin fastball, yeah, yeah, fastball you know, slider that lands, and then he's got a changeup. And if you're throwing upper nines with a changeup, that's not fair. No, it's not fair in college. And he's, he's very effortless too. Like how his delivery. Mm -hmm. Like it's not even, it. he's not even trying. It's like one of those guys right where, right like, you, like you know he he know he throws hard, but like the delivery, right? It might fool you to think that it's not as hard as it yeah. is. And know? it's like you expect a guy look like upper nines to be like you know big jacked out of his mind. Like mm -hmm. he just looks like a I don't want to say normal guy, but you would never expect it, right? Mm -hmm. And he just goes up there and it's like effortless, and he's yeah. just like throwing ninety eight in the seventh inning, right? Yeah. So when uh, I think my freshman year when. Talk, Toffee did a hidden ball trick on my ass. <laughs> I, I, I fell for that shit, a hidden ball that trick. Shit. And, uh, I that shit, bro. bro, like, I, I, come, I come around third, and, you know, I, I get down the line, get back. He just so walking I'm, past I'm, I'm, you, I'm, I'm on the bag, and then uh, I'm just, I don't know where I was looking. I'm just chilling, just chilling. And I step off the bag a little bit, and then I just, Toffee just, bow. I'm like, damn. <laughs> And Cora's right there. I put my head down. Right. Hey, that's exactly <laughs> I put my head down, man. And then he's like, "Say, like, Keanu was still playing football at Innsworth. <laughs> he's, he's not. He's not even playing baseball right now. He's still at Innsworth playing football." Bro, I remember the craziest thing. Jason Delay back picked me at third. Freshman he did year, back bro. pick you as a couple of times. Bro, it, chill out. It was one time. It was one time, bro. And Corbin, bro, right? no, was, you got oh, it a couple hey, times. Yo, bro. Duvall was horrible, no, dog. No, no, we ain't talk bro. about that. He got one, one hit his freshman fall. You remember that right. shit? Right, and I still Lip played school. that year. Lip school. I did. Yeah. Get, I did get one hit. It was a bomb. Too. No, no, no. He got two. He got off two. Off top, I smacked. I mean, not off top. top. Off pen. Off pen. I smacked pen shit. Cool, but his other hit was a. Uh, but it got so bad with you though. Rupenthal went like this. He told you the curveball was coming, <laughs> and, I and then he threw the curve. And, and you, I hit it. You got your head, so you got you got your two hits. That's fine. Yeah. That's I'm fine. like wait, when Rup did, I'm like damn. It was like mid scrimmage too though. I think it was a, it was no it was a live at bat. I think it was a live at bat. Yeah, it was something. It was yeah, a live at bat. It was shit. a live at bat. But he did he did he show did. it to I, me. I was I, like I, I was mean, like damn bro, you really had to do me like that. Bro, I used to be snapping on his ass every day. I'm like motherfucker. Swing yeah, the hey, fuck bro, I had a bat, rough, bro. Rough, fall. Yeah. rough freshman. That fall. was just a rough fall. Yeah, we got ass kicked out. Bro, yeah, bro. <laughs> the my city, that my city was, bad, was yeah. horrible. Yeah. Dog, we, got we didn't have black and hear about that. We day, didn't do dude. black and gold, dog. Was yeah. it like you guys? You just said you guys are done. Yes. So yes, well, we had a we had like two months where we didn't do shit. Well, we, no, we I was going back months. and forth between Lipscomb, Treveca, because they were working on the field, the field, the wall. They were building the wall. And so uh, that in itself was a headache. Us getting, we was getting on many, many vans, little buses, oh, traveling to go true. to go train. And I don't know, like just the the live old and like the pitchers yeah. here, the stuff, the scrimmage. It just it wasn't on point. Like people, the pitchers were throwing. Sh yeah, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna say the guy's name, but he's throwing stuff over the long innings. And of course, he just threw his stuff down. He just like he was just done. He was just done. And that that fall, I think we had a meeting, and we we're uh, he had us in the dugout. In the dugout. And he sitting on top of the ledge, and he's like, "I'm looking to get rid of people." Like he said, "I'm looking to get rid of people." It was low key like a he Dion cut, speed. He, he cut, cut like six guys. It was nah, four. He, he cut he cut three to four guys, 
And but like that whole week, he said like, "Don't come back. Don't come to the to facility. Like, get out of here." And he was yelling. He said, and he's, "You know, he was screaming. He's like, and it's not one of those. I'm trying to see if you're gonna come back and hit or not. No, like, don't come. He like, said, like, it's locked down. It's you locked cannot down. Come you can't here. come. And so, like, the next day, we had a meeting in McGugan, uh, at, the, at the top floor in the study hall, and Penn Murphy's trying to see if we go present at NBA at his, at his old high school. We try to get things coordinated. Wasn't and that right when we got kicked out? Right when we got kicked out. That's what I just out. said, boy. God, no, no, it You're wasn't. That, it was in. It was in the locker room, though. He was doing no, that. No, it was what? not. We, we were got out the we got out. He said leave. We didn't pack nothing up. We I'm left. saying, but before we left, after he stormed into the classroom, started banging the fungo on the shit. And no, that was a, bro. He just right, making no, that's story. a whole different story. Oh, that's a, but it starts there though. I remember Penn came in the locker room there. He's like, guys, we, before we leave, grab some stuff. We gonna go to. Well, that's because Toffee had his hat on in the weight room, and I'm, that's what hell, I'm saying. But it started yeah. there. Okay, it started there in a snowball. Exactly, yeah, he did come in in the. In the <laughs> he came into the meeting room. He got in Cuz's face. Who? He got oh, in tall face. Yeah. And it was like, God, dog, man. I ain't never seen that, no shit like that. That was, that, was was that was the first time I was on the podium, like, oh, Big ass shit with a podium. Duck it was like, Zoe. It, Remember, it, it went right over Zoe's head. He was like, oh, my, duck. That one, my freshman out there, she turned me. Get on the bus. Came back and uh, kicked the door open. Fungo. I'm, you know, all the freshmen, you sitting in the front. So Carl Ellison sitting next to me, he, boom, hit that shit. Carl Ellison, jump. I got X Turner in the back of me, kicking my seat. I got Ben Bolden sitting right next to me, squeezing my legs so I don't laugh. He hit this shit like two, three more times. Carl Ellison, steady jumping. Then the fuck, then he hit the board and the marker, splash everywhere, like on Kilo yeah. and Jason DeLay and all that shit. Motherfucker just like, can't nobody move. And he just banging that shit. And then my whole time, I'm not listening to shit he said. I'm just like. Damn, that's a strong ass fungo. Yeah, <laughs> shit ain't right. fucking practice, bro. I ain't thinking about shit. Mother. How strong he, the damn fungo was. He came was. in smashing the fungo, bro. Because before he got in Toffee's face, then he came. And I'm sitting, there, it's me and then Jackson Gillis is at the very corner. He and he's got a water gator. bottle. Yes. Somebody he, gave he's got, you know, the little like <laughs> shaker bottle. So I, Gillis, I didn't bring shit. Gillis had it in there. It's filled with water, right? I'm sitting there. I see him walk up, walk by us. He seeds it, grabs it, unscrews it. Pours it out on our feet. Just pours it out. Puts it back. He said, oh, y'all think y'all special, huh? Y'all are special? You're the only ones that could get to have water in here? I was like, oh, shit. And then he just started smacking that. Yeah, but back to what I was saying, if y'all interrupt my ass. But that week, we started playing flag fo football. I took to him football like, um, by the, the rec center. We playing football. And like one by one, he's like testing people, come see me. Yo. Come see me. Yo. And like no one knows if it's going to be you or not. And so, like, the whole week, boy, like, you just tense. I'm going to class. I right. can't think straight. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm like, kicked off the team. I knew what was going to He had talked, because I went and talked to him, like, right after the shit. And I was trying to get us to get black and gold and all that shit. He was just like, nah, none of that shit not going to happen. Because yeah. nobody ever knew. They just said it was because we had lack of players. Well, yeah, he said that. but like, Yeah, that's yeah, what I'm saying. They never really knew what happened. But that, he, was, that fall was by far the worst thing I ain't going to say who we called seen. in, but he, he done... I mean, he cut some people, but he also had some other people in there. He was like, transfer papers, like, signed them, like, here. Like, you, he ain't got to be here. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want you here. And the fact that we still made it to the Super Regional. Still made it to a Super right. Regional, bro. When we got to, what was it? What was it the, when we went to Arkansas, that series, right? Yeah. We kind of turned, turned around. around. Nah. And then we went to, the, we went to Clemson, beat their ass in their region. And, and then, then we just went to the If we didn't run into Oregon State, we'd have went to the College World Series, bro. We thought Oregon State was sweet. We did. Cat. We definitely I, thought I, I we were about Hey, yeah. we were going into Oregon Jeez. State. We were like, okay, yeah, they nice, but we really about to man, do it I to didn't know that. I knew that shit once. I was watching the whole time, bro. I'm like, hell. Was man. that the year that they won? No. no that's, that's the year, year before. They, they had four losses. That's the year they had that crazy four. Record, bro. They had four losses. Four? We went into the Super Regional. They had four losses. And we were. I'm in my head. I'm like, oh, yeah, we got we them. We they, watching film on them. Let me down. We watching film, eating breakfast, watching film. They going through it. And I'm like, they small, they like, they're crappy, you know, everything. We look at them like, man, they ain't ready for us, exactly. you know? Yeah. Like, we got dubbed, dubbed, finna light them up. Hey, I was man. like, oh, Jay, girl, Toffee was going, Toffee went off in the regional. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, him, Jaren, bro, they yeah. finna go crazy. Man, Nick Madrigal hit a damn double or triple 
dubbed to a slider and one a arm. fucking left. Yeah, one hand. Yeah, he had a broke one he hand. He had a broke hand. Bro, broke he had wrist. A, threw a slider and left hand and battered by wrist was playing through. Madrigal had a broken yes. wrist. They're like, he's on, he, like the, the regional, he was only bunting. They, they still said getting his hits. wrist was, he couldn't swing. Bro, the first at bat, I think he hit a double off a dub. I was like, bro, what? The fucking slider was in like left hand and battered by then. <laughs> Motherfucker hit the shit like 600 feet over. What's his name? What, what's the, the first base? Quan, oh, KJ Harrison. That's Harrison. Name, so he got like dropped that. by the Brewers, I think. Yeah, something like He hit the ball. Yeah. Once he hit that bomb off that the was, I said, It was on line. That, that shit was got out of there quick. So hard over my head, bro. But then, apparently they were hey. uh they were the record were they were 41 and 0 if they scored first. Then. And but they, they, hey, Spence, they didn't tell oh, us shit. this. Corbs, none of the staff, they didn't tell us that. Why would they tell us? They didn't tell us that. And then later on we find out. 41 and they 0. They were 41 and 0 when they, they scored, scored first. They scored first both games. I let that ball go shit. between my Yeah, legs. I was just about to say what I saw. Nah, <laughs> what I saw. Shit. And you ass got picked off in second. I did. Yeah, 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 bro. yeah you got picked I was off like, in second, damn, bro. What's that bullshitting, bro? God damn. <laughs> bro, when I saw the ball go by in my second. Damn, I got picked off in second. Bro, you got picked off in second. It was one of those. I thought it was Arkansas. No. Nah. <laughs> no. It was, it was what, like, it was boom, Oregon boom. State, you dive back, bro. boom, and you like. You look it up, bro. Like, bro, I know that run for that ball was lonely. Bro, that, that's a lonely Look, look. It took off and got to the, the ball, ball got, bro. It was raining so hard and the ball got hit to me. I'm like, bro, I'm not about to stand in front of this shit. Like, it's hitting and spinning. I'm like, fuck. And this shit go right between my legs. Bro, it went right. Bro, I saw I said, It's okay. I saw that, bro. I was like, I sat down, dog. Like I, I'm standing. I, know, I'm, I was, I was standing, standing next to Boo, and I was just God, like, God, God, damn, bro. bro. He had no chance of beating him, bro. No, that was the, the most like defeated I ever felt. Like we literally, really? it was at, the team. first game after like the second inning. It was just like, bro. No, that, no. We were ready though. We were ready. No, we came in and like no, we, we was gonna beat ready. them. Yeah, we I'm telling ready. you, we were, we were high as hell off of Clemson, and they we was, were like, oh, we got yeah. that. That team was loaded, dog. They didn't make one mistake that weekend, and they even had they didn't pitch. Yeah, they didn't pitch lefty. Because and he was the yeah, best pitcher in college cause baseball because yeah. of uh, oh, the, uh, yeah. that case thing. Yeah. 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 If he would have pitched, <laughs> we would have lit his ass up. We probably would have. <laughs> yeah, we probably no, lit his real ass talk. Up. We probably would have did better we, against him. Come on, come on now. Just knowing what happened and who, what transpired, and yeah. the whole mindset at the play would have been different. Bro. Y'all realize he had like a point five ERA. He's a lefty yeah. though. Yeah, I don't who, care what he was. He had a .5 ERA a whole honest, year. I'll be honest. The nastiest pitcher I faced, like Dollander was really good, but Jerpy at Oregon State. That's lefty, what Enrique said. They had. Yeah. He was like, he Short came out of the pen. Too. Yeah. He came out of the pen to like clinch for them to go to the Supers. And he was like 93, 95 from like a hip slot on the left Shit. side. And I remember I didn't see the, any pitch that he threw to me. Like, I was just lucky to make contact. So it was like hey, the first two the balls were painted on the black. Umpire calls him balls. So I was like, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like, all right, well, I'm just going to hope he goes in right here. And I think I capped the ball, got the runner to second base, and I was proud of, my, well, I was proud of myself. I was proud of myself. I made contact. <laughs> but ooh. that guy was yeah. gross. Oregon yeah. State, that team. Was, hey, yeah, we was not. If he would have pitched, bro, it was, it was a wrap. No, it, was, that was, it was just bad though. Like every time we was hitting, it was raining. Yeah, then, that was a weird. When they got up to the hit, it something come out. It stopped <laughs> raining. I'm just bro, like, what? We ain't yeah. feeling it. No, that I was a good like trip though. We went, to, we went to Hooters that time. Yeah. Fuck that team. trip. Fuck yeah. that trip. Uh -huh, Fuck Hooters. that trip. You played for Valley. You still an asshole for that. What you mean? Drown when you drowned his ass. I got that video too. Cause Harry. I smacked the shit out of Booty. He, bro, in the, <laughs> the in shit out of Booty. Stretching. And he does, bro, you not smack me that hard, bro. Bro, you no, smacked no, the shit out of no, your no, ass, dog. No. You mad, bro. You wanted to fight. This, I, only, this is the first time I ever seen him mad, bro. I was, he was man. Mad, he, he left the locker room fast and everything, bro. He did, bro, he didn't talk to me the rest of that day. He did man, not I think, talk I, I, I to me. I think it was the first time I almost swung on you, dog. I was like, <laughs> he's mad as hell. I ain't gonna lie, bro. You did hit me hard as shit. I don't know why I smacked him. I forget what you said. I think that was in March, too. It was in March. And man. I got his ass back like two or three months later. Like mm -hmm. I was remembering that shit. I'm gonna get his ass back, man. We we in the hotel room. Me, Spence, I'm taking the best nap Alonzo. of my Shut life. Shut up! Like, I'm the talking. best nap of my life. And we playing Mortal Kombat and shit. We uh, he go to sleep. I'm like, bets. I'm just sitting in bed like this, just waiting. Not, I'm tired as hell. I'm I'm not going to sleep though. He he sleep. I wait till he starts snoring, and then. <laughs> Ro was asleep too. I wake Ro up. I'm like, I'm about to drown his ass. Yeah. I go, I go, I get the little ice bucket. Let me go down the hallway. 
Fill it all the way up with ice. Get some cold water. And I let it sit for 30 more minutes. Oh let God. it sit, you know. And then I tell Ro get his phone out. And then I just... Boosh! He, you know, he, he thought he was drowning. Right? <laughs> I didn't know where I was. I'm talking, you know, when you're in a great nap, yeah, like you hey, dreaming man. and everything, bro. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I'm just like, tell you, I'm gonna get your ass back, man. I wow. did. I couldn't say anything. Like I couldn't even right. put a just word together. Shock. I'm just yeah. like, couldn't like hit any. I was just like, that was some cold ass water. Yeah, that one hurt. <laughs> yeah. I don't regret it though. I will say that I don't regret it. It's yeah, funny. I got it. We do have that video somewhere, probably. I gotta see this. <laughs> that water was so cold. Oh, yeah. Like, I real deal felt like I just jumped in the ocean or something. I was like, what? I thought I was having a dream that I was in the ocean. Oh, that's that funny, good. Aaron. I'm glad it's funny. <laughs> It's not that funny. You got you got a vein coming. It's not that funny, Aaron. <laughs> what is that? No, the funniest part is Boo's prep for it. Like, oh my god, hell yeah. 30 extra, 30 extra minutes just to make sure it was older. Bruh, I was That's thinking about that shit every weekend, dog. Shit. Damn, bro, I really got you. Y'all ain't like got that. no stories like that, bro. Dude, honestly, like we were lame when it came to that stuff. We, like, we pranked the, the road. shit. No, oh, the me, road? Was, was me, you, and Lonzo, whoever got in the shower, you getting water dumped. Uh, I, think, I, think <laughs> I, I got videos every of that. Time, like, every time <laughs> somebody <laughs> got in the shower, you getting water dumped. Like, like, you man. better lock the door. Like, you don't lock the door. We <laughs> open up. We picking doors and everything, bro. We <laughs> did <lock> everything. <laughs> didn't drown, I think, bro. Uh, what's his name? I like, likes to get mad. Like, I lines that we hear the door open. <laughs> He'd be like, I hear y'all. Like, bro. <laughs> He's like, bro, come on, y'all. Why y'all childish for? Boosh. <laughs> Every time, man. Oh, yeah. God. Man, I can wait till Amar come on this thing, bro, because we, we, we roomed together one time in all three. We roomed together one time, and it was the Georgia series. And we fought the whole three days, bro. I mean, like, literally fighting, like, he would lock me outside the room, or like I'll lock him outside the room. Like he's like, bro, call me daddy. Call me daddy first. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is that, <laughs> bro? <laughs> <laughs> so you, bro, you got the man booty cheeks. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, bro. No, this man Amar, bro, we'll get back from the game and we had a hotel room where it was like like the regular door, then got like the couches, like a suite kind of. We had the regular couch room, he had our bedroom through a different door. So he'll lock the room to get into the room. I got all my shit in the room. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, I gotta get my stuff. He was like, like, call me daddy first. You know, I'm like, I'm not calling you daddy, though. He was like, well, you're not getting in the room. <laughs> you know? But uh I'll eventually <laughs> I struck out one time in the fall senior year. You sure did. I remember that. I got two hits. Two hits. I was just weird everything, bro. No, college was fun, though. Even though Vandy wasn't like other schools, it was fun, though. This year was senior year, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, y'all. I wish our senior I wish that year was that with you. If you were there, that shit was crazy. What? Talk about when y'all went to the. Nah, shit. it wouldn't have been fun because he would have had a girlfriend. We was doing our own thing. We were singing. True. We were singing and mingling, you know. Not in the fall. Huh? Not I'm not, the fall. I'm talking if you were there for my senior year, his junior year. We were both single. Me and him were single. We were, we riding, like, we riding deep. I'm saying like my senior, <laughs> my senior fall, I was single. Oh, uh, we're not talking about that. Man. Catch up, bro. <sighs> Put your ass on the slow oh, bus. Bro. Did y'all uh, pregame circles? Did y'all, did y'all continue the tr- tradition? Uh, Hell okay. yeah. Yeah, baby, baby, yeah, baby. we do. What? Yeah. Uh, we well, did. we uh, did we do it we there? St- nah, we started, we started it with sophomore year. My sophomore year. So your junior year, we started it. So he should have been? No, then the year he left, the year after he left, 18. Uh, we started in 18. You got to tell a funny story. Well, like we'll, we'll get in a circle, circle before the game starts. You know, we rock Pro- back and forth. Prerogative story, actually. And you got to. Oh, yeah. we, we used to do that. Yeah, we did uh, that. It was like. With Sunday stories? Yes. Yeah, yep. Sunday stories. Yeah. And then you got the. Everybody ask a question like, who's your. Or would you rather. Oh, yeah. Would, would you, you rather. rather? Or who, who would you rather. I can't even remember anything. You know, it was like, would you rather have. <clears throat> a, you could say it. Weird. I don't remember none of them, but it was like. Sit on a cake. 
Huh? <laughs> Are you like? <laughs> nah, you got some stuff. Yeah, that sounds about you. right. That sounds about right. Nah. Yeah. Bruh, hold on. So, you know, we always are, got that. Are we still on this? No, I'm, not, I'm, I'm past you, but we're not that important. So, we talking about, you know, cords, no hats in the classrooms. You got to sit in the first two or three rows. And I was like, I was like the, I guess, goody goody two shoes. I never wore a hat, ever, like in all four years. And, but of course, everybody else wearing hat to classes mm -hmm. and not caring. And so, and everybody sitting in the back. I'm like, wow, this, this, nobody just listening to this man at all. <laughs> I was like, I'm in the front row right. and everything, and you know, but get to the point. So I'm in, I'm on commons, I'm eating breakfast. And sitting with a, with a John, that's a girl, people don't know, sitting with John. And uh, I got a hat on. I'm like, I'm gonna wear a hat today. Right. And I, I, wore, I wore a dolphin's hat, you know, felt fly, felt, Fly as hell, and you I'm sitting. We uh, not commons, so not this door, not the middle door, the one closer to the, the street. Mm -hmm. So right there, she so open up, and I'm facing the wall. She facing me, and at the corner of my eye, I see Brownie, <laughs> I see Corbs, <laughs> I see Brooks, I think Levitt at the time, like all four when they would recruit. I'm like, ain't no fucking way, bro. <laughs> ain't, ain't no way. The one day I wear a hat. All these motherfuckers coming in, and so, and they How come. Quick through, you take it off, and they come through. No, it was too quick. Like it was, I didn't want to make it look like I was doing something wrong. I just left it on like I was in the right, you know. And so, they come in. I know they're coming in. I'm just, I'm just locked in on a girl, hoping they don't see me. You know, I got Vanderbilt yeah. hoodie on. <laughs> <laughs> they not gonna see. Me. And so I'm talking to the girl, and her eyes just go up, and she just staring at them. And I can feel Corey right behind me. He just, he just standing right there behind me. I'm like, I'm not turning around, right now, bro. I'm like, turn around. And then she just kind of like, she starts doing this. I'm like, <laughs> I turn around. And this man looking right at me. He's like, pointing at my hat. He looking up. So I'm like, Hey man, you know, <laughs> but he, he he wasn't mad. He laughed it off probably because I was in front of a girl. You right. know, he laughed it off. And he had a crew with him, but but I was I was sweating, dog. I was sweating like That's in front of the girl too, man. That's why you don't do do the right thing, boo. Do the right thing. <laughs> yeah, we not gonna talk about you and <laughs> times you don't get in trouble. <laughs> we, we, we'll, we'll we'll say that for another episode. <laughs> oh, it's dumb, bro. Doing dumb shit. You know. Dumb shit. Hey. <laughs> Look at me now. I know in the hospital and shit. I've, I've heard the story. I know they told that story. Yeah, that's a Vanderbilt legend. That it's is a, that is a legend that's a, hey, story. Bro. That's a legacy I'm story. I'm a legend on and off the field, bro. That's crazy. On and off the field. Crazy. Hey, when he started talking, when he started asking questions, don't you want to slap his bro, ass, bro? Like, <laughs> like, how was he, like, his senior year? Like, how was he? Because he has a I voice. Was cool. It, I was the best. Was I not? Like, you're he, great. You just didn't really do much. It was just there. Yeah. Damn. So that's good just to be I didn't there? Have, I didn't have the whole year. I didn't have the whole year. But, yeah. That's you great. had a whole fall. You had a whole fall. And, we were, and they were great. They didn't, I didn't need to do anything. Mm. We had no incidents. And about which mean well, we had about there was one incident. It was the paper thing. I can't control that. Yeah, motherfuckers was cheating. I can't control that. Oh, I remember that. There ain't nothing I can do about that. Nah, you can't do nothing about that. Hey man, that's a appreciate you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for real. That was, that was real. That you, that that you was really, good shit, man. You got in some good stuff right there. We appreciate that for sure. Yeah, of course. yeah man. Look out for Spencer Jones, man. Follow my Instagram, all that. Yankees uh, top prospect. Yeah, yeah. yeah Yankees uh, top about prospect. To slide through that prospect. Best of luck this upcoming season for you, man. Mm -hmm. Hope to, hopefully see you in the show. Oh, hold on. Before we even end that, you know, sit seven, you, man. You got. Have you met Judge or anybody like that or none of those guys? I haven't met any of the big leaders nah. yet. Okay. okay. Seems like they you got going to tight. big league camp this year? 
Uh, I will see. I'm not sure yeah. what my plan is. Got you. Okay. Just get down there and I'll just, wherever they tell me hey, to go, I'll facts. be like, all right. Do work. Smile. Right? No, I feel that. But no, I appreciate you for yeah. real. Appreciate you. Time, follow man. the kid. Yeah. Follow the podcast. You know. Yeah. Like, time, and subscribe, man. Leave your. The 2% your, with two T's. 2%. Leave who you want to see on the podcast in the comment section. DM us. All that noise. And yeah, man. Peace. We out. We out. Peace.